Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here, ready for another episode of Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Just a reminder and a thank you. Uh, it is not too late to enter the contest. We are giving away a free copy of either Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts or Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail, which will be playable right away. Uh, and all you have to do to enter that contest is subscribe if you haven't already. Then click on the click on the link in the description below. It'll take you to another website where you can enter the contest. Once we hit fifteen thousand subscribers, we will draw a winner. Hoping to do that before July or January first, so we can draw that winner on the first and announce it. That's all you need to do to enter. Nothing else. We got to hit fifteen thousand subscribers first. Back to the game. I uh, had a couple of requests for this one, and I wanted to do something that went back a little further. So today we're going to somewhat recreate the Battle of Manila Bay, which was a decisive naval engagement in the Philippines, which pretty much eliminated the Spanish uh, from their colonial aspirations in the Philippines and gave control of the Philippine Islands over to the United States. Now, if you look at what was at that particular battle, uh, these are what you have as far as engaged vessels go. And you'll see that they talk about protected cruisers and unprotected cruisers. For the purposes of this game, we're going to go with armored cruisers and light cruisers to represent those. We're going to go with 1898 technology, though some of these ships were not necessarily built in 1898. Uh, but you have the engaged vessels for the Spanish here. You have the engaged vessels uh, for the United States right here. The Olympia, the Baltimore, the Raleigh, the Boston, the Concord, and the Petrel. Uh, so looking over here at what we have, George Dewey was the commander of the U.S. forces. Uh, Patricio Montojo, uh, Montoyo um, was the, um, I guess I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but there you have it. Uh, here's the engaged forces. Major victory for the United States forces in the early uh, action of the Spanish-American War. We're not going to do anything. Actually, you know what? I think we are because we're outnumbered a little bit. Uh, so I think I will go ahead and we're going to probably shrink this down to about 5,000 meters so we can get right into instant action. Let's go ahead and design our ships. So we've got Armored Cruiser 3. We're going to have Cage Mast. It looks like that's going to be pretty much the, the best option to go with here. And it's not going to let me put on a Cage Mast on this thing. I wonder if I... Make it a little bigger if then it'll allow. No, it doesn't look like it's going to. I don't know why Cage Mast is even a, an option if it's not going to let me build it. So can we put one on the rear? No. And there's nothing I can really do to change that at all. So, all right, I guess we go with rear tower three. It's not a huge difference between the two. Um, dual funnel here. I don't know if we want to put two sets of those things in there if we can. Uh, we might have to go a little bigger with these bad boys. Get a little more length so I can fit another dual funnel in there. And I'm hoping that's going to be enough. Uh, we can go all the way up to Harvey armor. No Krupp armor just yet. No auxiliary engines, no shafts. We can go to induced boilers. That's about it. That'll help with the funnel capacity. We're at 86%, so still not quite enough for what we need to do. And changing to the three doesn't change that at all so um range finder pretty uh primitive range fire finder as to be expected uh, these ballasites are actually pretty good um to use for this citadel one that's the best we're gonna get i don't think i'm too worried about torpedoes at this stage we'll go ahead and reinforce the bulkheads as much as humanly possible Shrink down this. We don't really need to worry about speed too much, so let's drop speed in order to get 100% engine efficiency. May need to change that again once we've added our armament. We can get up to 11-inch guns, which is actually pretty impressive for 1898. I'll definitely take that. We're going to have two on the front, two on the rear. We're a little four-weight offset, but we'll, we'll correct that before too long here. We do have those unprotected cruisers. So I don't know if we can get any side guns on this thing or not, but certainly can't hurt to try. Now, same with secondaries. I'm not entirely sure secondaries are a possibility on this thing with the nature of how it's built. Maybe if we can get one out here or not, we're going to probably have to go with casemate guns, if anything. Five-inch casemate guns aren't so bad, really. And we can get a bunch of those. 
we're going to just slap as many of those on there as we can to get started. And then we'll have to deal with things like weight. I'm going to go with heavy shells. We're going to just plow right through these guys' armor, I think. we just got to worry about having enough to get through it all. We can get up to electrical turrets. Now, obviously, all of that causes a big problem for weight that we're going to have to deal with. All right, we'll go back down to a uh, few bulkheads. It gets us close. I may sacrifice some armor here. This may not be the best idea in the world to do. There we go. We can probably get that armor back. All right. I think we'll be good right there. We're just going to have the, the two big guns uh, on either side. But then all the casemate guns, I think... That ought to do pretty well for us. We didn't do anything to protect the barbettes. That's probably a good idea. Once again, a, a weight issue. I, I, I'm I'm pretty comfortable with sacrificing speed in this particular mission for this. So in this engagement, basically the entire Spanish fleet was destroyed. So uh, that's what we're after. We've got South Dakota, West Virginia, Des Moines, and Frederick. So we've got two named after cities and... Two named after states. Fair enough. Let's go ahead and start with slowing down and see what that gets us as far as our our own cruise speed bonus. It's uh, climbing now. We've got moderate sea waves, which are definitely causing some problems for me. But we're super close, so we're getting right into the engagement on this. We don't see all of his ships, though. I just see the two right now. The other one's got to be out there somewhere. Honestly, I'm thinking we're going to get two of these firing on each. I don't want to get all four firing on one, though I can see the benefits to that. Also, we're going to go ahead and get into a tight formation because that'll give us a bonus to accuracy, which is something I'm desperately needing right now at seven kilometers. I've only got 436 shells, so we can't kind of just shoot it out forever. Get a look at this guy doing his thing. We'll have a pretty steady fire going with uh, with 11 inch guns. About 46 second reload time. No hits so far. Probably going to have to get even closer to do that. Let's get a look at mine. So we're only getting about a... Thirteen percent cruise speed bonus. I don't know if it's different with these older ships. Let's go back up to eighteen and see what that happens. See what that does to it. We'll watch it for a minute and see what happens. Oh, we landed some hits. Looks like with the five inch, not a lot of damage, but it's something. So far, the accuracy coming from my casemate guns. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five inch. Okay. 28 damage. Methinks we're going to have to get closer. Now, the, the crew speed bonus dropped, actually. So we're better off going back down to 16. Yeah, we're just up to a 3.7% chance. Let's go ahead and speed things along a little bit. I still don't see his other ships. Not sure where they are. 
If they're running for dear life or what. So far, two blocked shots, two ricochets, one overpen, and four penetration. Man, 1898 is just not the time for accuracy, that's for sure. Right, I'm going to go ahead and start closing the gap on these guys. I see smoke behind him. That's probably where his other cruisers are. Are we all firing on those guys now? Looks like we are. We're all firing on the lead ship. San Felipe's also got 11 inch guns, but only 258 shells left to my 412. We could probably wait him out and then close for the kill. He just got a hit on me. Now we're starting to see his other ships. This is where it gets interesting because they're probably going to have some torpedoes. Although, I don't know how much damage they're going to do to me from 1898 technology. Let's see if we can maybe get some better, better accuracy on these ships that are closer. I'm starting to land some hits. Not a lot of damage so far. Those casemate guns will probably f start firing on the Sirena. Oh, the accuracy of this time period is just so brutal. Getting some good hits on San Felipe now. I'm going to switch over to... AG for a little bit. Let's see what it does. I always like to experiment with that in different time periods. Some pretty decent sized waves, which is causing the 20% reduction in accuracy. Des Moines took a big hit. And it's down. Man. Yeah, it looks like HE's doing the trick. We're starting to we've already caused more damage on San Felipe than we ever did on the other one. Any of the other ones. Whew.
big hill in South Dakota. Libertad. He might be going down. Come on, baby. Just a little more. Take a little more water on. There you go. Just go gently under. Okay. Here's our first sinking. We're still kind of behind the behind things though because of uh, losing one of our cruisers. Probably should have started with the HE shells. We've got San Felipe in pretty bad shape. Fires everywhere. Once we get them out of there, that'll leave them with just one protected cruiser. Just need one, one more good hit on this thing. There it is. Oh, thought that was the one. Might have to be armor piercing that finishes off San Felipe to get that last bit of flooding. So close. Come on. Come on. There we go. That was a nice hit. That armor piercing tends to cause more flooding, and that's what we're trying to do here is push it under. Torpedo in the water. Might be too late. Turn hard. There you go. We're good. Mmm, man, that was close. Okay. There we go. We got another one. Where are we on this armored cruiser, San Felipe? Ah, oh, they're getting their pumps to get it, getting ahead of the water now. There we got another Sirena. I'm gonna get South Dakota firing on. All right, another torpedo in the water, Frederick. I think we're okay. Yep, they're already turning anyway. We've got just the three. We got a three on three battle at this point, but I've definitely got the edge. Frederick's got some damage. She's dropping to the rear. I think we're gonna gonna go ahead and start going in for the kill. I'm gonna switch back over to high explosives for now. Things pretty well dead in the water.
we lost sight of one of them. Come on, guys. I'm going to go ahead and speed up a little bit until we get a little closer. And watching from here seems to be the best bet. Come on, finish him. Go back to auto. Let them uh, hopefully choose. In this case, they're probably going to choose AP because maybe we'll get some flooding costs. And then they're choosing HE for the CL. The unprotected cruiser in this case. Guess we'll just come right up alongside you here. Ooh, getting close now. Come on. Got to be kind of hard to miss from here. 1.2 kilometers. We'll slow it down until we see this. Here we go. Ah, uh, only one of them hit. Why won't you die? There we go. Next. Now what we're dealing with is uh, we're dealing with an issue where this armored cruiser, this protected cruiser is getting so far away that we're gonna have a hard time catching him. But we can definitely take out this one. And we'll, we'll certainly call that a success. I lost one cruiser early on but pretty well destroyed his fleet after that Let's see if we can finish them off just a chase down mission at this point which is what a lot of these end up becoming in fact I tried to do one of the Academy missions earlier and I was going to record that today, but the enemy fleet just took off running as soon as I got into action, even though I was doing everything within the constraints of the budget and the technology that it gave me. Uh, just, I guess he didn't like what I had, and he took off, and I couldn't catch him. Come on, we just need one good hit on this guy. 
it is it is definitely going to be interesting when we get to a campaign to uh, deal with the frustration of early technology when it's really hard to hit anything. Just close in on this guy and see if we can catch him. He goes about as fast as I do, though with the damage, maybe not as much. All right, well, we are, uh, we're just going to be chasing and chasing and chasing for quite a while here, probably till I run out of ammunition. I've, been, I've actually not hit him once in the last 10 minutes. So I think we're going to go ahead and call this a day. The other one has long since gotten away, but we'll call it a victory. Uh, hopefully they can build something in in future versions of the game where you can program the enemy not to run so we can at least stand and fight and see what happens. But I understand why they would run in this situation. It's what I would do, but uh, it doesn't make for a lot of fun. If you build something that has the edge after you sink a couple of his ships. So let me know your thoughts. As always, make sure you enter that contest, subscribe, and we will see you again in a couple of days with some more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts action. Thanks for watching.